Hi, my name is Carissa. I am a New Zealander currently living in Chicago, hence the Star Spangled Kiwi thing. Um, that's how I like to describe my accent, but it's also a fitting description, I guess, for the direction that I am planning on taking this channel in. Um, that being that I will be talking about political issues or just social issues from the particular perspective of having moved to a country where the political environment is very polarized um, from a country where people's political affiliations aren't quite so defined. The strangest thing to me about the political environment in America is how geographically divided it is. Um, of course there are exceptions, but in general you have your Republicans in the South and in what I want to call the Midwest, but isn't actually because the Midwest is really further east than west, which is really just confusing. Um, anyway, and then everywhere else you have your Democrats. I think the danger of this geographical division is that when you're surrounded by so many people who put themselves under the same identifier as you, you risk completely avoiding critical discussion and just having everybody validate all of your opinions. And I think that's a big part of what leads to this kind of, I'm a Republican, therefore I believe this, this, and this, or I'm a Democrat, therefore I believe this, this, and this. In New Zealand, not only do we not have specific regions that are associated with specific political affiliations, but I think that people don't identify as strongly with a political affiliation. And that's not to say that people don't have strong opinions on political issues, but just that they don't define themselves as being left-wing or right-wing. The words conservative and liberal really aren't used as nouns in New Zealand. Um, actually, it always sounds like an insult to me whenever I hear them used that way. And I'm not even sure which one I would be because I'm comparatively morally conservative, but I would call myself liberal thinking because I don't believe that the laws should reflect my personal morals and I don't expect other people to live by my morals. Um, and I also believe that it's important to be forward thinking and to adapt laws to reflect the changes in society. I do think it's a lot easier to be more moderate in New Zealand, um, partly because we're a more liberal country in general, so the centre line is further left, I think, than the centre line in America. Um, but also our MMP system of parliament means that while the party who gets the most votes will have the most power and the leader of that party is the Prime Minister, um, the other major party isn't really far behind in terms of power, and also the smaller parties get representation in government with only a small percentage of the votes. This more balanced makeup of government makes it easier to be more flexible politically. I'm not meaning to insult America or suggest that New Zealand does it better, I'm just trying to explain why the political environment in America is so foreign to me. I'm aware that being a New Zealander heavily influences my perspective. Um, I spent most of my life in a country where even the police don't usually carry guns, but I was in much less danger of being shot than I am here. And if I had ever been shot in New Zealand, I wouldn't have had to worry about whether or not I had health insurance. So yes, there are things that I am certainly biased about because of coming from New Zealand, but I do acknowledge that I'm a Christian. And while I don't plan on getting preachy at any point, um, and if anything, it just makes me more likely to be critical of other Christians, um, I do think it's important to acknowledge the things that influence our perspectives. So for me, the two big things are my faith and my kiwiness. I believe in critical thinking and intelligent discussion with people who don't necessarily hold the same views as I do. I think we're all guilty sometimes of um, assuming that we know what the other side is going to say and therefore not bothering to listen to them. Case in point, um, my first video, I did a bit of a fake out at the start and I completely expected people to give up before they realized what it was actually about. But what I hadn't really anticipated was that people would comment and dislike the video without watching the whole thing. I think if you want to engage in discourse, then in that situation you are obligated to listen to everything that the other person has to say, because otherwise there's really no reason that they should listen to you. 
The people who talk the most and the loudest tend to be the people who are at the most extreme ends of an issue. And I think that maybe the people who don't talk as much, who spend a bit more time listening to both sides and form an opinion based on that, maybe have something really valuable to say but just aren't as good at making themselves be heard. I'm a quiet person, I spend a lot of time listening, and I see so many situations where people just end up having parallel arguments because they assume they know what the other side is arguing so they never really listen to them. And if you're just having parallel arguments, not even arguing the same point, there's no way you can ever come to a resolution. So as somebody who's always been kind of closer to the middle of a lot of arguments while still having a strong opinion either way. I've decided to start talking. But I don't want to just talk. Um, I value discussion and debate, so I really do hope that you will comment or post a video response to my future videos and that we can really start a conversation and maybe finally give the listeners of the world a voice. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I know it wasn't the most interesting, but I do plan to post some videos on more interesting topics in the very near future. And I really hope that you will join the conversation. Um, so thanks again. Bye.